Hello, people of the ScopeNet. It's Jan Beta, and today I'm going to show you uh, a little problem I have with my uh, old Harmac HM312-8, which is an old scope. And yeah, it's a nice little thing, except for it developed a little problem recently. But I'm going to show you. So I got my tablet running a 1 kilohertz sine wave on both channels um, by running the dual channel function generator by Qsoft, I guess is the right pronunciation, I don't know. I highly recommend this. This is a really good uh, function generator that is really use usable, um, at least for uh, sine waves and triangle waves, I would say. You need some kind of BNC adapter, like I have here to connect this to something. I have the, the RCA plug with a little BNC adapter on it to connect this to my scope. Uh, yeah, let me show the problem I have with the scope. Let's turn the power on. Oh, let's plug it in first. That might help. There we go. <laughs> so it takes a while until the screen comes up. Oh, it's an old scope. Old, old, old. So there we go. There's a sine wave. So. Yeah, as you can see. It had the problem that there were um, ghost lines here if I pushed the TV button. That seems to be alright again. Yeah, you see, I don't know if you can see that. If I push the buttons here, there's some some um, ghostiness there. So I guess, yeah, there we go, the head one. And it had the problem that I can't reproduce it now, of course, uh, like it's Murphy's Law. But it had the problem that, that on the one channel it just, um, there were like two sine waves to see because I think I guess the problem is that the switches are dirty on this thing. So let's uh, open this and let's see what's inside and clean some switches I would say. Here we go. Yeah this is uh, the backside of the scope and as you can see there are these little nuts here that have uh, use a 7 millimeter wrench to open these. I guess they're not very tight in there. So it doesn't have the, the ground lead uh, coming out of the plug. Someone put um, another cable in here and uh, fused the whole thing instead of uh, making a proper ground connection. Uh, yeah, I don't recommend this. It makes sense in some environments where you don't want to uh, short out your scope, but yeah, it's usable if you know what you're doing, I would say. So, yeah, but I would highly recommend a proper ground connection on all devices that have a um, metal chassis. So here you can see the little, uh, the little circuit board someone inserted there. That is really just a fuse holder and fuse. Um, they also put a little hint there on which kind of fuse um, to use there. It's really quite neatly done, I would say. So this whole assembly just slides off. So here we are. Here are some 
old fashioned caps. Here's the the um the tube. And yeah, some transistors, bunch of transistors here, some uh, resistors. There are quite a few of those um adjustable resistors here. I guess to calibrate the whole thing. And here, here's another one, big one. But it's really rather nicely um, calibrated, so I won't mess around with that. So let's see what's what else we can see here. So yeah, as you can see, it's rather nicely built. So you could, with a few screws, get this all out. All the ICs are socketed, really. There's another one, I don't know if you can see that. It's a bit dark. So what we can see here is that there's the switches that were that come from the front. Let me move this. They are just um, connected by these um, metal pins here, or wires. And it's just a, a normal switch that is connected to that. So I guess what we're gonna do is to spray these with some contact cleaner to make this nice again. And I'm also gonna go through here and remove some of the dust which has gathered here over the years. This is um, from the beginning of the 80s, I think, or from the end of the 70s. I don't know if we can see a date code of some chips here. And I think you can see that there are some date codes on here. And I was correct, this one has the 79 date code, and this one has an 88 date code on it. These are 74, this is a 74 logic chip. This is a 71 something, I don't know really. Um, but the date codes are clearly visible. Um, yeah, I guess I'll go through this and uh, clean these uh, switches and spray some contact cleaner in the, the pots also so that this is nice and shiny again. So here's something interesting, a little connector on the board. Maybe this was used at the factory for calibrating or um, I don't really know. This doesn't have any digital output, uh, of course, because it's a nearly, except for these uh, basic logic chips, um, nearly fully analog device. I don't really know what this is for. I guess it's some kind of uh, diagnostic thingy. Yeah, and if it was nice, I would maybe replace those caps here because they are quite old. But it's working, so yeah, I guess. Maybe in another video. I do it the same as I showed you with um, the amplifiers I'm usually repairing. So I guess I just spray everything I can find here. With a bit of contact cleaner. By the way, the middle one here is the one I suspected to be um, a bit dirty. So I'm gonna spray that. Give that an extra, extra spray, I guess. So then I'll turn this around. So I guess it's uh, nearly the same. Here are some more switches I can spray. And I guess the pot here or the pots here for the um, Y positioning 
it is. They are really good. They are closed pots, I guess. They they don't make any problems at all. So this is a really nicely built device, I would say. And for the age, it works really, really well still. So, I guess, spray some of those. So here is um, the, the underside. And as you can see, it's quite, it's very old school circuit board. And there's the, the big um, timer switch. For the for the time base, um, which is really really it looks really sturdy and um, yeah it still works very well so no complaints there. So here's the whole assembly from the other from from another angle, um, and these are the um, rotary switches for the voltage per division, the height of the um, curves. There's some styrofoam still in there, which I'm just gonna blow out. Um, yeah, th this thing came packed in a really uh, crumbly styrofoam thing, so I had uh, when I opened this the first time, it was all full of styrofoam, so I'm glad I had uh, that all removed, I guess, except for these little remnants there. Yeah. So I guess that's about as far as we can get here. So let's reassemble this and see if it still works and if it works better than before. Oh, and I nearly forgot to mention that um, the tube has really high voltages in it, as holds true for all tubes, uh, even audio tubes. Um, so you don't want to touch any of the contacts that go uh, to the tube. Um, that it can still hold the charge after you unplug it. And yeah, it's quite dangerous, really. So in most modern devices, there's a big uh, warning sign to prevent you from doing that. In this, I didn't see one. I don't know if there was one, really. So yeah, let's reassemble this. Put the screws back on. So I'm giving it a bit of a um, fastening, but not too tight, I guess, because, yeah, I just don't need to. This is really sturdy in it, without really breaking the screws. Ah, so. It's a bit dusty from the front, maybe I could uh, clean it up a bit. Mm. So let's uh, reconnect everything and see what it does. So the function generator is running and yeah, let's just see. Maybe this still works, won't explode and works even better than before. At least it doesn't have any uh, problems with um, the contacts anymore, I guess. No ghost images whatsoever. Yeah, this works really nicely now. Trigger on the second. Yeah. And it seems that this... And maybe we could also spray these a bit. Yeah, this uh, seems to be fine now. 
So the, the problem I encountered was a little problem with this switch to um, put it into TV frequency mode, which had a little... Yeah, it was just a little dirt on the contacts, I guess. So yeah, that was our little uh, look into the Harmac HM312-8 from 1980, I guess it is. Um, yeah, I'm quite in love with this scope. It's a simple scope with, uh, I think it's a 20 megahertz uh, scope, purely analog, as you saw inside. Um, yeah, but it's uh, for repairing audio stuff and stuff like that. It's really sufficient and I'm quite in love with the look and feel and the build quality of this. That was the time when uh, things were built to last forever and uh, yeah, this lasted for uh, 36 years at least. Uh, so yeah, I guess this is quite a good thing and yeah, I like this a lot. I have a new scope, but I think I can't let go of this one still, even if the, the new one is uh, a lot newer and a bit better. It even has some digital capabilities. But yeah, I won't do more spoilers now because that must go into another video, I guess. Yeah, so that was my little uh, teardown slash repair cleaning of the Harmac HM3128 oscilloscope. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and there were some interesting parts to see. Um, yeah, if you want to subscribe to my channel I will show a little link here. Oh, big link maybe. Big, big link. Um, yeah, so if you want to give me some money, there is a PayPal link on my channel page, which you reach by clicking on my little logo here. And if you want to support me uh, on a regular basis, you can click on the little info button, um, where I also will link related videos and stuff like that. And my Patreon page. Patreon is a good thing and every little bit of money is highly appreciated because, uh, yeah, I don't have much. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Elbita. See you next time. Bye.